Hello to all my friends and family and welcome, welcome to Jim's 5am club. I'm just up here on the north coast, mid-north coast of New South Wales at uh, Nelson Bay and it's sunset on this Sunday night and I uh, just thought I'd pump out the Jim's 5am club. And I thought today I'd just do another book summary and the book summary that I'll uh, cover the next 10 or 15 minutes is entitled The Little Book of Yes by an author named Noah Goldstein. Or Goldstein. Anyway, so uh, what uh, this little book has is it's got 21 strategies of uh, improvements, little hacks, life hacks that one can consider. And uh, I'll just go through each each of those life hacks and see just where it leads us. So uh, the first life hack that comes from this book is giving. So uh, the importance of uh, helping in order to uh, to get help, and it's uh, an important sort of uh, kickoff here in this book in terms of uh, asking asking for help and also giving help but in terms of uh, personalising your requests and the importance of uh, asking for favours. Now a lot of us are uh, shy to ask for favours, but uh, what I'm starting to read and what I'm starting to understand in terms of personal uh, behaviour, human behaviour, is that people love to be asked for favours. So uh, you may want to incorporate that into your inventory of skills to ask people around you for favours, but uh, the people that you ask for favours aren't your, you know, your, your wife, your children, the people who you spend all your time with. It's people that you uh, have infrequent sort of contact with and people who you want to try and build a uh, relationship with that you may want to uh, consider asking for a favour. The other uh, thing that he talks about here is called exchanging exchanging and exchanging and the art of keeping a thank you diary so for looking looking for ways to thank family and friends and associates and trying to thank people in advance and it's called a uh, pay favor a pay favor forward so you're uh, paying people in advance or you're thanking people in advance by doing things for them. Third one here is gifting, so the importance of uh, being thoughtful and generous in the gifts that you give and to just not give money. I guess that's, that's a weakness of mine, I'm a, a money giver, but they say that uh, what's more important is to give a thoughtful gift something that's gone in you know you've thought about something that's generous and something that's going to uh, create and add some benefit to the people who you're giving the gift to the fourth one out of the 21 is cooperating so uh, the importance of learning how to cooperate and what the author talks about here is that uh, a good skill to have even if you don't need advice is to always ask for advice because it leads to the perception of you being a team player. So I know that a lot of us, especially us male, don't want people to tell us what to do, and it's not the manly thing to do. But what the author here is suggesting is that if you're smart, it's all about give and take. And it's all about um, sharing the, uh, the workload. So consider the art form of asking for advice in order to uh, be a teaming sort of person. So uh, the other one that they talk about here in this book is pausing. So what you need to do is check your state. So if you're not in a resourceful state for some particular reason, what you're better off doing is rather than engaging people around you and uh, possibly pissing them off, the best thing to do is to sit and pause and then think about coming back another time or uh, taking a break from uh, the, the discussion or the engagement 
so that you come back and uh, in a better state rather than spoiling a friendship or spoiling something by saying something that you're going to regret. And a lot of people, <laughs> right about Christmas time, should uh, heed this advice because a lot of things are said, a lot of things are done uh, when families get together, which set the tone for the whole uh, next 12 months, which is not all that good. In, term, in terms of compromising, yes, by all means, compromise. But what the uh, author here suggests is that if you're going to compromise, if you're going to negotiate, always start with high demands. Start with high demands and then compromise. But don't start with a low ball. Don't start with low standards or low demands because uh, you're going to be uh, screwed further down and then you're not going to be happy with the outcome. And learn to be bold. Learn to be bold and be comfortable in asking for things. And you can always say yes or no. Now you don't have to accept the other person's position. You know? Um, and once again, this is all just advice that you can consider. Number seven is knowing. Wherever you can, it's important to demonstrate your knowledge and your expertise in order to get listened to. Because a lot of people uh, fall into the trap of being too humble, to be to being too much of a quiet achiever. But what it does is that uh, it gets it gets it doesn't get you noticed. Um, and in a work environment, for example, you need to get noticed. You need to uh, demonstrate your knowledge at every opportunity, and to show your expertise in order to uh, stay relevant and to uh, be considered somebody who's worthy of being within the team. The next one is a beauty, admitting. Um, so what they talk about here is something which is quite uncomfortable, especially for most men. I don't know about the women, but it's uncomfortable for men. And that's make a list of your flaws. But don't admit all your secrets. But by listing your flaws and demonstrating your flaws and acknowledging your flaws to uh, people around you, it does give you an air of, of authenticity and, uh, and makes you come across more genuine and more raw and, uh, and uh, personable. So something to consider. But a lot of us never, never want to look at our flaws. But this is, could, could be a good way of uh, just doing some self-assessment and looking at your flaws. The next one is entitled Asking. Um, and you need, to, uh, you need to increase, you need to up your ante in terms of the things that you ask for in your life and of the people around you. And what the author here talks about is that you must consider listing all the things that you ask for and who you ask them from and whether or not you're getting yes or no's to your direct requests. And that way you can assess your effectiveness and your capability. And then you can sit back and wonder and, and look at why you're getting rejected. And then look at ways of just changing the way you ask or how you ask or the timing of your, your asking try and improve the yeses in your life. Um, the next one, number 10, is conversing. It's great to talk, but uh, what you need to understand and what we all need to learn is that when you're in discussion, when you're conversing with other people, when you're talking, it's important to learn the, the art of supplementing and complementing what the other person is talking about rather than challenging them and you know, seeking um, um, a confrontational sort of uh, position. And you see it a lot on bloody Facebook that people, instead of just scrolling past and just ignoring your post, you know, they'll, they'll make some smart ass sort of comment, which is unwelcome, you know? that a lot of the comments that are made, you know, 
you know, you can, you can do without. So you have to think about how you engage uh, people, friends and family, and make sure that you spend more time where possible, supplementing what they're saying, validating what they're saying, as well as complementing what they're saying, so adding to what they're saying, as opposed to uh, chopping it at the knees. The, uh, the next one is humanising. So what they talk about here is the importance of learning how to uh, be, be a storyteller. Because they say here that stories always trump facts. So it's better to be able to tell a story than to just issue a list of facts. And humanity beats statistics. Something to learn, something to use and to incorporate in terms of helping you get to a number of yeses. The twelfth one here on this book, the little book of yes, is liking. So it's important to, uh, when, when you're engaging people for the first time, to get them to like you. To like you first, and the way you get people to like you is by identifying similarities, things that you have in common. Simple, it sounds simple, but a lot of people just don't get it. A lot of people start off relationships with uh, or try to start a relationship by being a bit of a smart ass and by being somebody who's going to uh, you know, piss people off but uh, that doesn't work according to this author. It may work on some occasions but in general you're, uh, you're going to get uh, yourself into trouble. The third, 13th, one, 13th one out of these 20 ones is complimenting. You need to learn to have to uh, make genuine compliments and to make pe make people feel that they're seen. You know, in this uh, in this cancel culture, people are just scared to say anything anymore for fear of uh, infuriating or um, upsetting the people around them. But. Uh, the author here suggests that what you should be doing, or what you should try and do, is to identify one good thing about a person every time you meet and to mention it. But to be genuine in that one good thing because it is uplifting and people love being noticed. The 14th one is labelling. And you, you see it all the time, people being labelled. But what the author suggests here is that uh, if you're going to label somebody, try and label them in the positive light as opposed to try and as opposed to being negative. Things like calling them a legend or calling them a stud, something that'll make them feel good in terms of their personal image is something that'll help you get to the yes and for people to like you. Number 15 is reasoning. And it's a simple one, but it's a powerful one. And what the author suggests here is that you should always give a reason for your request, even if it's an obvious reason. You ask for something, just give a reason where, where possible. So, uh, my mic had dropped off, so I'm not sure how the audio is going to turn out on this one here, but we'll wait and see. The uh, 16th one is committing. So if you want to get somebody to commit to something, what's the best way of doing it is to bring it up in public, in the public space, where other people are, are around. So you get that social proofing, and that, uh, that, uh, that pressure, that peer pressure to get somebody to uh, commit to a, a, or make a real commitment. The 14th or the 17th one, is implementing implementing a goal so what you need to do is as soon as you make a goal you should do something immediately to uh, get commitment happening and to try and uh, build build momentum and by organizing a plan and getting a plan in place is something which is really really useful the 18th one is comparing 
Um, you should always be asking when people are comparing things and saying, making comments, you should always use the comment compared to what? Always uh, and always the advice here is go last in an interview. Uh, be the last one to be interviewed because according to the author it increases your chances of being, um, of being um, successful in the interview. The uh, 19th one is called following, so um, it's important to highlight how others have benefited and to show how they have, uh, how they, uh, have improved their lives. In, so in order to get to a yes, you need to use a following sort of technique and highlight how your clients have benefited or how ha highlight how you've benefited or how other people have benefited by following a particular piece of advice. Uh, because people like to uh, follow the lead and to follow the example and the positive example that other people have, uh, have had in their lives. The 20th one, the second last one is losing. So, uh, what the author here is says here is that losses weigh heavier than gains for most people. And if you're trying to sell something to somebody, one of the techniques that you may want to consider is to highlight what they have to lose by not saying yes or by not following uh, following your lead. And the last one here is the ending. Always end on a high. Um, and always make sure that you leave your best to the end. And that's about it. That's the 21 strategies from this book. The Little Book of Yes by Noah Goldstein. Goldstein. And let's finish off with a positive affirmation. As you can see, the sun's gone down. It's getting dark. I'm on the beach here. The water's lapping up against the shore. So let's finish off with the positive affirmation. I'm alive, I'm well, and I feel absolutely great. To my friends and family, stay connected, stay relevant, stay reasonable, and most importantly, let's use some of these um, hacks from this book and uh, see where they can lead us. But uh, getting through life and getting people to agree with you, to like you, to uh, te want to team with you is based on some time-tested principles that the author has uh, brought up in this book and things that we can all learn from regardless of our age and uh, things that we can incorporate into our daily uh, regimes and, uh, and normal life. So thank you very much for joining me at the end of this beautiful day and uh, I look forward to coming to you again tomorrow from a different location with a different message, a message of empowerment and something that we can all learn from and things that we can help, help us live, learn and pass it on. So thank you, Lakya from Jim up here at Nelson Bay and we'll chat again. Yasas, and thank you. Thank you for, uh, for joining me on this wonderful late afternoon. Bye.